computer. Oh. <gasps> no! A technician will be with you in four hours. Four hours? You can upgrade for just $5,000. What? The universal serial config board should be set to ID6. I need that in plain English. Help! Leo LaPorte to call for help. May I help you? All you nice people, welcome to the show. Call for help. I'm Kate Patello filling in for Leo Laporte, taking well-deserved time off with his family. Hey, but I'm here answering your toughest computers, computing questions, your easiest computing questions, your burning computing questions. Call me at 888-989-7879. That's toll free. Send an email to callforhelp at zdtv.com, which should, in theory, print out right there on that printer. The minute you send it, well, we'll see. Or you can get in the chat room. Go to www.zdtv.com slash call for help. Click on the chat now button and get into our chat room. And if you don't know how to do that, we're going to be able to help you out today on Call for Help. Prepare to make your mark on the World Wide Web. We are learning the first step of HTML today, folks. And really, it's not as hard as you may think. Plus, we found out yesterday on Call for Help that <clears throat> installing a netcam can be a trying experience for everyone. It's live. It's real television, including television personalities, such as myself. But we figured out what the problem is, and we're ready to help you troubleshoot it as well. But first, let's take a netcam call. We have Janet from Prospect PA on the phone. Hey, Janet. On the Hi. netcam. There you are. Hey, welcome to the show. Thanks. So what's your question? Um, I tried to change my folder, the na name of my folder, or, or remove my folder, my ZDTV folder, and, and it said that the change could impact one or two registered programs. Does that mean I can't do that? Well, Janet, what do you have installed, or what's in that folder, that ZDTV folder? Uh, just TV, ZDTV, and uh, I don't know, there's another little one in there, I think, that has all the little armatars or whatever you call them. Oh, your avatars? Okay, what it's talking about, when you install a program, say you install Word, and you tell it to save documents to C, Word, your Word subdirectory on your computer, and then if you try to go in, and, and move that folder or rename it, say, ZDTV, then everything in your, your program, like Word, that thinks it's saving to C Word can't find C Word because you've renamed it ZDTV or moved it somewhere else. Let me, let me show you. Also, when you install a program, there are drivers and uh, DLLs, which are libraries that make the program run that will look specifically where they've been installed and where the program told them to install them. So say, for instance, I have something in my AOL folder here, and I'm trying to run that. If I rename this folder ZDTV or something, well, I'm not going to do that because Leo will kill me. But uh, if I rename this ZDTV and I try to launch AOL, it won't be able to find it because it'll be looking for that AOL folder. You see what I mean? You don't want to actually yes, move... Yes, I mean, I can't... You can't actually move... I can't just... <laughs> you can't... <laughs> okay, we're on a delay. Love that. You can't actually move the folder once it's been named if it has anything that links to any other programs in it. So if anything else you're using, Word, AOL, Excel, Netscape, needs to refer back to something in that folder, you can't rename it or it won't know where to look. Now, if you have programs and you want to put them somewhere else on your computer, you're going to have to re uh, uninstall them from that folder and then reinstall them where you want it to go so you can tell it to point everything where it needs to be. Again, like if I wanted all my AOL stuff to be in a folder called ZDTV, I would have to reinstall AOL and point it directly to that ZDTV folder. You with me, Janet? Yep. What was that? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you trying to look at, you have your avatar folders in your ZDTV file, right? 
Yeah. Okay. If you're in virtual places, which is our chat client, and you try to find your avatar, it looks in a virtual places, or it looks in the subdirectory in the place you told it to go. And so it'll look like in your ZDTV folder. But if you took that folder and you moved it somewhere else, then when you tried to find your avatar, your computer wouldn't know where to look. Did you catch that? Oh, shoot. We lost her. Well, I hope that straightens that out. Let's, uh, let's go on, since we're talking about this stuff, and let's do the web tip. All right, it's time, in fact, for the web tip. We're going to learn to rearrange your Explorer toolbar. Let's do that. Here's what you do. Oh, neat music. All right. Here's what you do. You click and hold the left end of the toolbar. Now you can rearrange these sections here of the Internet Explorer toolbar, the address, links, and buttons by doing that. Click on the left end. Come on, give it to me. There we go. And you can pick that guy up and drag it anywhere you want it. So I have my links button, call for help, and I have dragged it up to the IE menu. You can also do uh, hide any of these by going into the view menu scrolling to toolbars, and checking the one that you no longer want to look at, like that Lynx guy right there, and it'll return unchanged. And folks, that would be the web tip. Click on that thing and drag it somewhere else. There you go. All right, hey, coming up next on Call for Help, so you love to surf the web, but the thought of creating your own web page overwhelms you? Never fear, Justin is up next with this week's web workshop.
Welcome back to Call for Help. I'm Kate Patello. Tell me, do the letters HTML intimidate you? Hey, they've intimidated me, so. Do you think learning how to create a web page involves learning how to speak a foreign language? Kind of in a way it does, yeah? Well, our guest today says, not so. This is Justin Hall joining me with this week's web workshop. Now, Justin, you swear that you can teach me how to make a web page in five minutes. I can do absolutely that. I can teach you, and I think everybody who does, who's at home who does what we're doing, they're going to learn how to make a web page in five minutes, too. All right. I'm going to believe you. We're going to see a massive explosion of personal web pages across the country in the next five minutes if <laughs> you right. stay with us. All okay, right? well, let's prove it then. He's got a lot to live up to here, kids. Okay. All right, here we go. Well, the main point that I want to get across to everyone watching this show, right, is that all the software you need to make a web page, you've probably already got on your computer, right? If we're talking about, you got a web browser, right? Because mm -hmm. that comes standard. You got Internet Explorer and Netscape. You need another program to make a web page, and it's called Notepad on Windows machines. And that comes on every machine. Or Simple Text on a Macintosh. And that comes on every machine, too, right? Yes, it does. All right, so you know how to find it, right? If we're looking for Notepad? I do, in fact. All right, guide us with your expertise. Go to Start, yes. Programs, okay. Accessories. You got it. Accessories. Notepad. Notepad. That's it. Now open this up. This is going to be your key to, to the digital world. So this is where you start making a web page. That's right. In Notepad. This is going to be. Now this is going to. We're going to make a web page here that we're going to look at on your computer. Okay. All right. The computer that you're working on. It's not going to be something that's going to be live on the web, but it's going to be something so that you can see how easy it is to make stuff show up and look good, or look all right in your web browser. All right. Okay. So let's type here. Type two sentences for me. Type two sentences. Okay. Uh, Justin is teaching me how to do this. And then hit a return. Hit yeah, return, hit a okay. return and then write another sentence. He swears it will work. But I'm Oops. not allowed to swear. This is okay. So <laughs> here we go. We're promising that it's going to work. We got two sentences on the screen. If you're doing this at home, make sure the two sentences are on two different lines, okay? So okay. now let's save this, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to go to save. You know, save as in your hard drive. Let's go out to the desktop on your Windows machine. Click this button up here. Okay. So we're on the desktop. Okay. We're on the desktop. We're going we're gonna to give it a simple little name, okay? No punctuation, no spaces, just one word. We're going we're gonna to use your name since you wrote this little thing about me, and I'm so touched and honored. Okay? So we're going to write K-A-T-E. I hope that's right. That's correct. Okay. I don't have one of those weird spellings for my name, no. Yeah, boy, some of those are weird, aren't they? We could put, then we're going to put a period at the end of that, mm -hmm. and then we're going to say, we're going to put four letters down. And this is about as weird as the whole thing gets during this five minutes, about as weird as the whole thing gets, is we're going to put HTML here. And what that right. tells, that, those four letters tell Netscape that it can read this file, it tells Internet Explorer that it can look at this file and it's going to come out in the web browser. Okay. And it stands for hypertext markup language, which is a complicated thing to kind of think about on TV. It's a short attention span, five minutes, you know what I'm saying? Go to the website. Go okay. to the web workshop web, uh, website. It's part of the Call for Help website, and you'll see what it stands for, what, you know, what it means, okay. what the ramifications are. So we're saving this file not as a text file, which is normally what you do in Notepad, but we're right. going to save it as an HTML file. Right, and it's just the, the, the period four letters on the end. We're going to okay. hit return and save that. Then we're going to go over to our web browser. All right. And we're going to go to the file menu. This mm -hmm. is the same on all web browsers. they got a file menu. You want to go to open page, or it's called open document, whatever it's called. You want to go to the one that says open file or open page that will be on your hard drive. And here we're going to go choose file and we want to look for the Kate, and there it is. Now, if you've done this along with us at home, it should look just like this, where you've got your document out here on the, you know, sitting out there on your hard drive, and you can double click on that and so, hit open, and it's going to come up in your web browser. Hey, but there's, there it is. But now, wait, is this on the web right now? No way. No, no way. This is, so you can see C, Windows, Desktop, Kate. Don't worry. Okay. I mean, I know you, you know, you swear it'll work. I'm glad it's not on the web because it hasn't worked yet. I don't want to make any promises out to the web I can't keep, right? But, now this works in Explorer, right? This as works well in Explorer, Netscape. Netscape, same deal. Different, might be a little different wording up here, but that's just that way people do things. Okay, now, where's my return? Well, I your return, return. See, I'm sorry, Kate, this is where, this is where the, le this is where people actually learn stuff, right? This is where, if you're following along at home, you did the same thing, you said, where's my return? You know what I mean? It's not, it's, it's there, the words are coming up, but they're not looking like what I want them to look like. Right. So let's put a little, let's put a little mojo in this thing. Let's okay. put a little action in this file, and, and this is it. This is all you got to learn to do, to be a web pro right here, okay? Okay. You got to hit shift and comma, okay? Shift, like that, comma. so it's going to be a bracket, like that, like it's you're like opening. A less than yeah, that's sign. Right. exactly One less, than, less than for the mathematically literate. And you're going to hit a P because we're making a paragraph, kind of a, an action happen. And then we're going to hit shift, period. So what you end up with is kind of a, almost a bubble. You're making a bubble right. around a letter that stands for, 
it's an English word paragraph, you know, it's mm -hmm. nothing too crazy. So now we're going to save this, right, because we just put that little P bracket thing there right where we want it to be. Now we're going to go back to our web browser. All right. Clicked on it, and we're going to hit the reload button up top, and it's going to... Look at now this. be spaced as though you had hit return. Now, it's, see, Netscape doesn't, un or Internet Explorer, they don't understand when you've got that return. They need that character. So that's all we did was we gave that little thing. And now, the way this looks, you see, you could take any essay that you've written, any story, any poem, you could take these little P's, throw them all in the thing, save it with period HTML on the end, and you've got a web page. Hey, and then you just have to learn sometime later how to upload it. Well, that's well, okay. That's the easy part. If you got this, man, they got you could pay a hundred dollars for software that'll do the same thing for you. But you just learn on web workshops, saving you money, giving you wonderful crafts, things to practice at home. And we have, in fact, made a web page in five minutes. You are oh, so thank smart, you so Justin. Much, thank you. Oh. Hey, he lived up to what he said he was going to do. No, now what tell she me. said I was going to do. Okay. What's the homework for next week? Well, if you've done what you've done here then you're a star, right? So, so give yourself a pat on the back. That's the first round of homework. Then we're going to ask you, OK, play around with the P, mm -hmm. and then go to the Web Workshop website. And we got some other tags linked to from there, so you can kind of see what the, a few of the other codes are that you might learn that you might start throwing around in your stories Ooh. to make them. Because there's a web page I'm going to show you real brief here. This is a web page. And you can see, by the way, this website is coming up right here. This website doesn't have much more than Ps, all right? If you go down here. It's a P there, you know, P at that first paragraph, P at the second paragraph. He's got a little bit of bold, but you know what? He's got like three things happening here. You've already learned one of them. All right. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank hey, you we've so learned much. one out of the three things oh, on this website. Thank you, us. Justin. All right. And remember, you can find Justin's accompanying web article on how to create a basic web page on the Call for Help website at www.zdtv.com slash call for help. See you next week, Professor Justin. See all right. You, Good man. All right. Hey, we got to take a break now. Shoo, sure, after learning all that stuff. Wow. But first, test your tech knowledge in our daily quiz. Here's how this works. If you know the answer, go to the Call for Help website at zdtv.com, click on the quiz, and if you answer correctly, your very name could be drawn to win a scholarship to ZD University Online Learning for a Connected World. Here's the question, y'all. What is a URL or an URL, a URL. Is it a uniform, uniform resource locator, unlimited resource line, useful remote login, or honey child, you are lost. Well, hope that's not me or you. Let's find out when we come back. Welcome back to Call for Help. Kate Patello, filling in for Leo Laporte. Let's check in with the Call for Help chat. Let's start over. Let's check in with the Call for Help chat room and see what people are saying about today's show online. Are they building websites? All right. Is everybody building like a website with some hard carriage returns or peas and peas and carrots? Hey, peas and carrots. It's a paragraph <clears throat> mark. Really, I thought of that all by myself just now. All right, so there's a chat room working it all out. Seriously, I'm learning a lot about web stuff from Justin. This is good. All right, let's see what else we have in the chat room. Anything? Hmm. All right, now we have a voicemail. This is from uh, Daria in Terrytown, New York. Uh, she wants to know, I hope it's a she, Daria. <laughs> okay, how do you make passwords for each folder? That's a good question. Let me guess. Say you're like mama and you want to keep 
the uh, Christmas list on your computer, but you don't want the kids getting in and checking it out. So let me show you how to do that. Well, you can start by doing it in Word. Let's open up a Word document.